1982, the Vancouver Stock Exchange set up a brand new stock index, the VSE index, to track the performance of the Canadian stock market. Now, stock prices go up and they go down, and you hope that they generally increase their value over time. But in the two years after it was set up, against all the expectations of financial analysts and the banks, the Canadian government and the Vancouver Stock Exchange itself, the VSE index almost halved in value. Now, that sort of drop is what's known as a crash. Wiping out 50% of the value of Canada's leading companies would be devastating to the nation and probably dramatically affect markets across the globe. This crash, though, seemed to be happening in slow motion. The VSE index was steadily, inexorably shrinking. And yet, over those two years, other similar stock indices in Canada and elsewhere remained pretty flat. Either the Vancouver Stock Exchange had some awful insider information about the future, or something in the computer code underlying the VSE index had gone horribly, embarrassingly wrong. Even if you're not financially savvy, you've probably come across stock market indices at some point. The Nasdaq, the FTSE 100, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the Nikkei. They're all just numbers used to measure the financial performance of some segment of the stock market. Choose a group of stocks you're interested in, multiply the number of shares by the share price for each one, throw in a suitable weighting factor, and there's your index. The specifics of each index aren't really important here. All you need to know is that an index is a measure of how that bit of the market is going. If the stocks are generally going up over time, then the value of the index increases too. If the market's having a bad time and the value of the stocks are going down, then so does the index. When it was first set up, the VSE index was normalised to a value of 1,000.000. And from there, it was updated thousands of times a day by checking the values of its group of stocks and recalculating the weighted average. The index itself was reported to three decimal places, and any remaining decimals in the calculation were simply cut off the end. In other words, the computer code truncated the index to three decimal places. Well, you can quickly see what happened. As we all learn in primary school, what you should do in these situations is to round the numbers up or down, depending on what that next decimal place is, not truncate them. Now, whether you round the number or truncate it, you're introducing a small error to your calculation. With rounding, because you're using the value of that next decimal place, the error is up just as often as it is down. But when a number is truncated, you lose the extra information in that next decimal place, the error is always in the same direction, downwards. This wouldn't have been a problem if they were recalculating the stock price average from scratch each time, but to speed up the calculations, the programmers had decided to simply add or subtract any changes in stock prices from the previous value of the index, which meant that each truncation simply compounded the ones before it. So why didn't the programmers see the problem from the start? Well. Perhaps they figured it's such a small error, a discrepancy in the third decimal place of an index measured in the hundreds or thousands, literally one part in a million. It couldn't possibly make a difference, right? But remember, the index was getting updated thousands of times a day. And sure, after a day or even a week, you might barely see a difference. But over days and weeks and months, those thousands upon thousands of downwards truncations all combined together to drive the index lower and lower and lower. And by the end of 1983, just 22 months after its inception, the Vancouver Stock Exchange Index had dropped from 1,000 to just 524.881. When they finally realised what was happening, the programmers fixed the code to round each calculation instead of truncating it, and they went back and recalculated the index over those 22 months. Embarrassingly, they discovered that the true value of the index was 1,098.892, showing that the market, rather than dropping by 50%, had actually risen by about 10%. That's quite a good return, really. It's a heck of a lot better than the alternative. 